Okay, guys. Um, we did away with the original sound. We're doing this uh, with a voiceover. And what we're going to do here is we're going to trim this tail down. Right here. We're going to start trimming it down. We want to keep that tail the same thickness. So we're doing a little swoop up on it. The cameraman on this is awful. Doing a little swoop. Taking that back. We're using a, using that Dremel like a knife. And we're making a paring cut. Remember, keep your thumb out of the way of that thing. Those, uh, those coarser Dremel bits will give you a good burn job. See that down there at the bottom? See that? I signed it. Down at the bottom. Yep. Although you'll probably never see that again because I think that beaver and his little tree trunk are going to get glued to a board. And we'll, I'll dress up the board, put some little rocks or something on it. Maybe some uh, grass, I don't know, uh, to keep them the board keep the beaver and the uh, log together there again we're I'm showing you to check the thickness of your wood make sure you try keeping that uh, the same thickness on both sides unless you're like going to turn the tail sideways or something but yep see tail same thickness nice tail beaver I'm a beaver! I'm a beaver! Yeah, you're a beaver. And we're working that tail, working the tail, work the tail. Working that tail up and down. Now when he sits flat, the tail will be slightly raised. Just gotta take your time. Make sure you keep your stuff uh, level. You know, keep it all the same. I'm now I'm rounding the side of his tail over a little bit. Up, oh, yep. It it dug in pretty good there. Oh, dug in again on me. And we're rounding it over. And we want to flatten that bottom out too. And that is the saber tooth uh, nugget bit, I guess they call it. It's uh, about, I'm going to say maybe 50 grit. So it's pretty heavy. Now we're going to a flapper wheel thing. Jordy showed me how to make over there at Carbon Fusion. Um, leave your bit out about an eighth of an inch. So when your collet heats up, it doesn't hang on to it. Okay. Now we're turning the speed way down on that Dremel. We don't want that high speed. So we're going to turn it down to sanding speed. And there you can see we're sanding her up. Get it all sanded out there. And we'll spend a little bit of time here sanding this, this critter. Getting its tail sanded out. We're getting it rounded off so it looks the same on both sides. It's symmetrical. It's going to be a good thing, guys. And then we're, that'll be setting us up for the uh, cross hatching on the tail. You know, beavers got them little squares on their tail. Then we're going to sand them down and sand and sand and sand and sand. The sand never stops. That's why I kind of like. Uh, like the flat plane style of uh, carving with knives, there, there's no sanding. The whole thing is about what the knife, the marks or the knife is leaving in the wood. Give it that old folk, uh, that old folk art feel, shall we say? Oh, beaver's trying to run away. We're just trying to round everything over because beavers don't have sharp edges except their teeth. If you really look at beavers' teeth, they're uh, they're rounded over too. Yeah. 
we're getting that getting a little undercut going on that that hip there doing some sanding and doing some sanding and doing some sanding yep and more sanding sand 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 so tell me if you like the voiceover better or if you like the uh talking with the um the machines running i'm thinking everybody's gonna like the voiceover better um, if, if everybody says they like the voiceover better, then what we're going to do is after I record all these, I'll go back and just do a voiceover and I won't even bother talking in them, talking through them. I'll just point out things that I'm doing and then I can explain them on the voiceover. See that right now we're just sanding the, sanding that little guy all up. Now we could just play music throughout this whole period here where we're just sanding. So we may do that too. I think I got it figured out. The other video I just uploaded has music and I, I turned it way down in the uh, settings. But it seems to be a little loud for some reason. When I did a playback on my phone. In my headphones it was right. I was wearing my headphones listening to it uh, on the playback. And it, it sounded fine, but then after it uploaded and I played it on my phone, it's like the music was a little loud. So now you can yell at me and say, hey, you got rid of the noise of the machines, but you left the, now you got that music blasting, I can't hear you. So remember guys, I'm new at this. I This is my first time ever doing this uh, YouTube stuff, and I'm trying to figure it out. I'll get there. I'll probably be down to eh, one subscriber by the time I get there, but I'll get it. There's a lot of sand, a lot of sanding going on on this video. Remember tonight, Thursday night, December twelfth. 5 o'clock East Western. And I can't remember if it's 7 or 8 o'clock uh, Eastern time that Jordy has that live chat going on. I'd love to have a live, live chat, but I don't have enough uh, subscribers yet to have live chats. I'd love to talk to you guys. Well, most of you guys I talk to on over there uh, with Jordy. On a carbon fusion there. Hey, don't forget to go over there to Rich's channel. Choose your own path. And uh, say hi to Rich. He's feeling lonely and neglected over there. So you got to go say hi to Rich. Poor guy. He's uh, making a snake cane right now. Over there at Choose Your Own Path. He's doing a fine job at it. Just a fine job. It's grand. Um, yep, it's uh, it's got skulls on the top. And then uh, underneath the skulls, he's got a, I believe it's a rattlesnake wrapping around the stick. It's, uh, it's pretty neat. You should go check that out. Rich over at Carving Fusion. Or not, oh, whoop, whoop, Jordy's going to kill me. Rich over at Choose Your Own Path. The Jordy is at Carving Fusion. Well, that's what happens when you have a building fall on your head. Mine gets all confused and befuffled. And we're sanding, sanding. See, we're still sanding the hump on that beaver. I'm still not happy with the size of it. 
And we're just we're just kind of flattening everything out so we can mess everything up. Yep. Getting that I'm working so hard at sanding that beaver, get them smooth, and then we're gonna go in there with a wood burner and mess them all up. We're gonna we're gonna cut hair with a wood burner all over that thing. That will be, I believe, in the next video, because this one's already 34 minutes long, so we're gonna wanna upload this one and then um i don't remember the other one i think i i started doing the burning and i stopped the video because nobody's gonna want nobody wants to sit there it took me almost three hours to burn all the hairs on this little guy now you don't have to have a wood burner i've got a v tool that does a tremendous job um for cutting those hairs in the only problem with trying to use a dremel for this stuff um is how fine the hair is on a beaver i mean if you don't care you could use one of those uh square aluminum burrs and tilt it on its edge at 45 degrees and go ahead and cut them in or if you got a um a real pointy one you could do that See how nice and sanded he is? Yeah. Look at them feet. Hands. Got all that stuff cut in there. I don't know why it takes me three or four days to uh, carve a little beaver. And Jordy can carve uh, three wood spirits and a snowman in the same amount of time. So, I don't know. I don't know. I I think he's uh, more proficient at his wood spirits than I am a, a beaver. That I think this is maybe the second one I ever carved. And he whipped off that snowman last night. Yep, little uh, silly snowman he made. Got a little uh, hat and some arms and a carrot nose, and he came out pretty cool. Very folk art. It's a Christmas present for his sister. That's nice of him, isn't it? Always thinking about others. That's Jordy. And we're still sanding that beaver. I should have enough sawdust laying around here to make another beaver after all the sanding I've done on this one. Yeah. And in that hump some more. If I knew how to do it, I would put this thing in time elapse. So we could speed it up and get to the get to the other parts of the beaver. It's like a bunch of sanding. But even though we're gonna go back and cut hairs into them. Uh, we still want that surface pretty smooth. We don't want a lot of lumps and bumps in it. And we're rounding the tail over. And keep everything smooth out there. I know what this, uh, this recording needs is some more beaver antics. Now we're running the Dremel slow, okay? I mean, I think I've got it turned almost down as low as it will go to uh, get that all smoothed out. And there he is, Mr. Beaver. How you doing, Beaver? Okay. And I think... Ah, the pencil. Yes. We're going to draw the cross hatching onto the tail. We're going to put a center line down it. 
first uh, we're the beaver right where his tail hooks to is behind is uh it goes from fur to like a leathery thing so we're drawing that in first so we know where our cross hatching lines are going to come to so now we're going to put a center line down them and what that does is we're going to make a big x oh, i got it wrong i must have been crooked with my center line allows us to put a, a center line down his tail See, we're always using center lines. Center lines, center lines. And uh, with that, I'm going to put an X on his tail so I know it's a benchmark. So you know where you're starting at. That's why we need that center line so we can kind of get a rough idea that if we start a quarter inch away from the center line with our X, which I'm I'm starting at where I drew that line across the back of the beaver where his, ta his beaver tail ends. So that's giving me a benchmark and which that angles my lines are going to be on. So we're going to go ahead and draw in those lines on that beaver's tail. And they're about roughly an eighth of an inch apart, I want to say. Uh, I'm just doing this by eye. Yeah, they look like they're about an eighth. They're going to be about an eighth of an inch apart. All the way on the beaver's tail. And I'm just doing it by eye. There's, I'm not doing no measurements with the calipers or anything. So, uh, yeah, we're getting her. Okay, you can see where we started. I just showed you where we started the cross hatching lines. And we'll go all the way down to the bottom of the tail in one direction and then we'll cross it coming back on the other direction. And we are going to use <clears throat> you can use a straight knife for this. And uh what you would do is you'd lay your knife in there and drag it down the lines okay but I've had problems with the wood chipping out doing that or you you could use a Dremel and they sell like a little saw blade for it you could use that I will be using the wood burner now believe it or not a wood burner will cut deep into basswood believe me you can uh with, with your heat turned up a little bit, there's no problem sinking an eighth of an inch into that wood. So I, a lot of times I run my wood burner, uh, not, it's just, a, it's not medium and it's not low, it's kind of in between. It's nice having the, having the uh, capability to co digitally control your, your heat on that. Like I think the high end of my wood burner is 70 degrees, 70, it's not 70 degrees, but it's a digital readout. And the low end, of course, is zero, and I usually have it at about 30. But on this guy, because I want to get that cross hatching burn into his tail, I think I turned it up to like 37. And I believe that's what we're going to do next. We're going to burn that cross hatching into his tail. Yep. Okay, there, now you can see it. We drew the cross hatching on. Where are you going, Rob? Where'd you go, Rob? I don't know what I'm doing. That's terrible. We can't remember what you were doing 20 minutes ago. Well, actually, it's longer than that because I actually burnt all the hairs into the beaver. Okay, this is the wood burner. I'm cleaning the tip of the wood burner with one of those sanding sticks. Because uh, you get stuff on there. Now I'm using a Dremel. 
you get stuff built up on them and they don't work as well. So you got to stop and clean the, the wood burner tip. You would think that it would just burn it off, right? No, it'll actually build up on that tip. So you want to make sure you clean it off if you have a wood burner. One of my favorite wood burners I used to have was uh, for cutting out plastic stencils. It was great. I used it for years, probably 10, 15 years, and then finally it went south on me. And I liked it because it had a, a very fine tip on it. And uh, I've got to get some stainless steel wire. There's a the tip. You see how, how sharp it is. To make my own burning tips. And then I can take them out in my garage and take a pinch them things shut and hit them with the cutter or the uh, TIG welder and weld them solid. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how, how easily this thing burns in the wood. And this is a piece of scrap basswood I have. And, of course, it's showing up on here backwards. It's supposed to say hi, not IH. And now I'm turning it up a little bit. Always test your heat on a piece of scrap wood of the same type. If you're doing pine, use a piece of pine. Using basswood, use a scrap piece of basswood. Okay. There we go. I must have turned it upside down that time. Okay, now we're going to cut. Or burn the cross hatching into the beaver tail. I have no idea why that camera is jumping like that. The, we don't have headphones hooked up to it or anything. At this point, with all the noise, background noise from the uh, machines, I decided that I wasn't going to talk, that I would just do a voiceover on it. <laughs> so we are. So now we're cutting in the cross hatching on the tail. And believe it or not, that's sinking in there for the cross hatching. Probably about 330 seconds. So just under an eighth of an inch. And you can see how quick it is. You're just it's like almost as easy as using a pencil. Yep. It don't take very long to uh, do the cross hatching. And it's in deep enough that when you go back and sand it, you don't have to worry about sanding all your marks out. Now we'll go the other way. You can see she's coming out. It's... putting that checkered pattern on there should come out pretty good yeah I'm sure the beaver don't like it he's it probably feels like he's being branded but beaver you must have those squares on your tail going back doing a little touch up a little touch up here and there and and I'll have to go back around them and do some touch up too because uh, after I burn these in I realized that down the, down the sides of the tail I didn't go far enough so I have to go back and make my little diamonds complete down on the sides there so it'll be coming out he's almost done only got a couple more lines to go So we use all kinds of tools here. Like I said, you could do this with a with a knife or a scalpel or a V tool. A lot of times, uh, like if I was doing this checkering on a gun stock, I I don't. Well, I didn't have a wood this type of wood burner back then, but uh, yeah, I used the V tool 
or parting tool they call it to uh, bring my lines back there I am touching up a line remember I told you I'd go back and touch up the diamonds well that's what I'm doing there Touching up some of the diamonds, making complete diamonds. See, I don't get it. Why that camera's moving like that? Strange. All right. And here we are going back. You see where the diamonds didn't connect there? about three quarters of the way up the tail you can see uh, you shouldn't be able to see white spots those white spots are where the diamonds didn't connect so I'll have to go back and connect them and you'll see that see the diamond you'll see them white spots start to disappear everything will be uniformed see that fixed just fixing up those diamonds you know that guy Rock of Ages, uh, he has a chainsaw channel. Such a nice guy. He's been, uh, he auctioned off a, there it is, see the tail? He auctioned off a axe that was made back in the 1800s uh, for a friend. There we are with the sanding disc. We're going to do a little sanding on the tail for a friend that has cancer. And all the proceeds from that went to her, to help her with her medical bills. Real nice guy. I didn't know who he was when I turned on the video. He had shaved, he had this great big beard and he had shaved it off. He's like, who are you? Am I on the right channel? Nope, but it was him. So now we're just kind of uh, cleaning up some of the smoke. You get that... Um, when you wood burn, you get a lot of smoke on your, it'll uh, not contaminate, but it will tint the color of your wood. There he is. Tail's done. And we sanded it off. Got the thickness to where we want it. Uh, so, um, yeah, you just want to make sure, make sure that the thickness of the tail is where you want it. Now we're going to go. And start burning those hairs in three hours of burning hairs. Uh, I'm only going to show you guys a couple minutes of this, and then I will go off on my own and finish the wood burning that took three hours, two and a half, three hours. It was ridiculous. Now we're burning that. Uh, that deal across the bottom of his tail where his tail connects to his behind see that give it a gave us a definite stop of where his tail was okay and now we're going to do a little wood cart a uh, little hair burn in here after we get that sunk in and okay i'd just like to thank you all for watching um Thanks to the new subscribers. Thanks to the old subscribers. Um, share this video. Like this video. Subscribe if you want to. If not, thanks for stopping by and watching me uh, work on a beaver. And you all have a good night. If it's night where you're at. If not, have a good day. And we'll talk to you later. We're just going to finish out with burning some hairs here. And uh, we'll do a few of them. 
I'm sure I'll show it to you. And then I will continue on to burn, burn, burn. Burn that beaver up. And then Rich has got to deal with that. He's got to paint it. So Still got it. He's going to go to me. Why do I got to paint it? It's already brown, Rob. Well, Rich. That's the way it is, buddy. Um, I'm going to ask him if he wants it primed. I, th no, I think I'm just going to send it to him the way it is, and then he can deal with it. There's only one thing worse than watching somebody burn hairs on a beaver behind, and that's watching paint dry, I think. I think the beaver came out uh, fairly decent. Um, he looks really good. Looks really good with all the hairs burnt into him. It um, gives him a little bit of texture, you know. He's not all smooth. Yep. Burn, burn, burn. Burning hairs. Okay. And we're winding it down now. I think he's looking pretty good. What do you guys think? Think he looks like a beaver? I think he looks like a beaver. Well, my conception of what a beaver should look like anyway. And... You see all the little hairs popping out there? There we go. Putting in, putting hairs on a beaver, giving him his winter coat, I guess. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty uh, beaverish. We got the beaver fever. And there we are. See, it looks like it's going pretty fast, but once you start working your way up that beaver, you almost think you're putting hair on a real beaver. You know, a full-size beaver, not a miniature little beaver. Okay, guys, um, we'll let this finish out. Putting hairs on a beaver. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you for uh, watching. And remember, just carve. Oh yeah, I'm going to give you a quickie here. You just thought you were rid of me. That is a flex cut micro V-tool. And I'm kind of showing you that you can do hairs without a wood burner. The tail's in the way, but... And I don't know if you can really see them without... Yeah, white wood is just hard to show on camera. And, of course, I'm 